Well, thank you so much for a little bit of your time this morning. And I think where we'll start is what a lot of people are wondering about right now is just how things are going in Gwinnett and what that day-to-day -day lifestyle looks like, how you guys are able to get in your work and what that workload kind of the routine is like right now. Can you take us inside and give us, give us that? Yeah, no, it's um, honestly the days get a little bit repetitive just because you know, you, you, you see the same guys every day and you don't really play any games. So that, that gets kind of tough, but um, I mean, we get tested every other day and then like all the, the COVID protocols are all kind of new, but we're all getting used to them. And then, um, I mean, they have most of the pitchers on a five day rotation, which is nice. And then, so we just pretty much face the same guys every time we pitch, which is good and bad because you know their weaknesses, but they also know your strengths. So then, I mean, the at-bats get a little, uh, I mean, repetitive. So, I mean, it, it's fun though. I'm, I'm having a really good time. I was going to say, it's like facing the team, the same team all season long, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's good practice. <laughs> well, and with what you're saying, I mean, everybody knew there were going to be these challenges and any mm -hmm. baseball this year was seen as a, as a positive, right? But right. as far as the development for you and what you guys were all hoping to accomplish this year, how difficult has that been? Do you feel like it's hampered any yourself in any kind of way? A little bit, because you don't get the same like adrenaline and same atmosphere you get pitching in a game against kids that you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I feel like a little bit in that sense, but for me, like, I was horrible in spring training. And so getting like, like the, the when we got sent home, that was kind of like my opportunity to like reevaluate and find out what I needed to fix. And so I had, a good three months to work on all those things. So when I came back into summer camp, I mean, I was ready to go. This is the best I've been throwing the ball in my life. Wow. Okay. So what was that process like for you when you went back, reevaluated, and you said you worked on some things? Do you mind sharing what a few of those were? Yeah, no, I mean, so for me, my biggest thing has always been throwing strikes. Um, my, my stuff's there, my fastball's there. And then just, so just getting consistent with off-speed pitches, uh, being able to throw them in any count. And then uh, also work on, on fastball command. Um, and, and, and so being able to like face more hitters, cause I was throwing lives for probably about two months before I came back. Oh, wow. And so I had the opportunity to like, really like work on everything against hitters. Um, uh, and I think that was huge for me. Okay. So what were you able to do then during, I mean, so how were you able to get that work in, I guess? Cause a lot of people had to shut down during the pandemic. They didn't, you know, know where they could go to get that, that work in. So where were you going? How were you able to do all that? So for the first, I'd say month and a half, we were working out in my buddy's garage. And so we had dumbbells from like 10 pounds to 50 pounds. And we would do like a deck of cards workout. Yeah. And so if you flip the card and it's a certain suit, you do a certain exercise for that number of reps. So we would do that for about a month. And then a gym opened up. So we got into there. And then throwing wise, a lot of the high school fields like let us on as long as we had a smaller group. So we would get a couple hitters and then... Um, and just coordinate our own lives that way. Well, it seems like you were able to still do quite a bit then. Um, mm -hmm. Did that make you feel like when you I, were able to get back with the group of guys that you're with now that, that you were kind of, I guess, in front of where you could have been had you not been able to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, I mean, a lot of guys came in only having thrown bullpens because they didn't have the resources. Right. And so, uh, I mean, by the time – I was up to like three innings before I got here. So then we had to scale it back and then build back up. So, I mean, we kind of, I almost kind of took a step back because I was so ready to go, but um, no, I mean, I, I was, I, I was really thrilled with where I came in. I was, I was ready to go. Well, speaking of ready to go, I'm sure you've kept an eye on what's going on with the big league club right now, the rotation, you've obviously mm -hmm. seen some of the injuries and things that they're battling. Um, does that, do you let your mind go to a place where, hey, that call, that call could be coming any day now? And if so, do you feel like you're ready to go? I do feel like I'm ready to go, yes. But I mean, like, I try not to, I try not to look at, you know, all that stuff because that's ultimately their decision. I can just control what I can control. You know, as much as I, I do want to, like, wish and hope for that day, like, I don't want it to be at, you know, somebody's expense, like, of, of pitching really bad, you know, like, I, I want to earn my spot. I don't want it to be given to me, you know, and so, especially with the last being in the minor leagues the last five years, like um, I feel like we've all grinded for this opportunity. And so now that it's coming close, like I try not to, uh, to focus on that, just worry about what I can control. But yeah, I, I am ready. I am ready. 
evaluate. That's what I was just going to say. Evaluate where you are right now in comparison to, like, you mentioned the minor league seasons before. You clearly came into spring knowing right. you had to work on stuff. So tell us where you are at this point. Um, in terms of stuff, I've, I feel so comfortable with, you know, four different pitches. I've added a slider, which has been really helpful. Um, and then just in terms of my delivery, everything feels relaxed, comfortable and explosive, which is important. And, um, I, sh I, sh I have a lot more confidence in all my pitches and I'm able to throw them in, in whatever count. The slider, was that something you always in eventually planned to incorporate in, in your repertoire? Or was it something that maybe somebody said, hey, I really think if you, you know, did this, that would work out for you? Explain that process. So I always knew I, at some point I wanted to, to get a slider, but I was working on my curveball because they have the whole fastball up, curveball um, combination. So I really wanted to get that down. And so once I felt pretty comfortable with that, then that's when I started messing with it. So probably about... I'd say about a week before I came out to summer camp, I started playing around with it. And it actually, it, it turned out pretty good. So I've been working on that a bunch with the coaches down here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a good pitch for me now. And I'm assuming uh, between Shane and William Contreras, you've worked with both of them quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, those guys, it, what, a, what a luxury, really, the oh, yeah. depth at catching that this organization has and, and, and the teamwork there. How have they helped you along the way? And, and where have you seen them take big steps? Right, so we're working a lot on on where everybody sets up, and uh, you know, it, for me, like I'm just gonna try and tack with everything. I'm not necessarily a pinpoint guy. Like I'm not gonna paint the ball on the black, and and so I'm I'm telling them pretty much set up right down the middle, and I'm just gonna just gonna launch it at you, and then but they do such a good job of catching and receiving and making my pitches look good, and not just mine but everybody else's. And I mean, they're incredible back there. It's 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 really nice. Was it kind of cool to see William make his debut early this year? Oh, it's awesome. I, I've been playing with him since 2016, like back in the GCL. So to see him get up there and not only just get up there, but get a bunch of hits, that was awesome. Yeah, it was big, big day, big moment for him. Well, right. um, how about Kyle Wright? I, I asked Ian about him. He was a guy who's going tonight. Um, you guys have all obviously been around him and, and you've gotten to see him. What's impressed you about the way, you know, he's now been able to handle himself at this level? I, I mean, I'm I'm so happy for him because he's a great dude, one. And then, two, he's obviously an awesome pitcher. But I think for him, like, getting the opportunity to, like, pitch and learn and stay there, you know, versus, like, pitch one time, come back down, you know, go out of the bullpen. You know, so now he's getting in a routine where he gets to, like, develop in, in, in the terms of, you know, being a starting pitcher. And so I think, uh, I mean, he's obviously going to do great tonight. But, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for him. Well, another guy I asked about, um, Nick Markakis happened to be around for a few days. And when he came back here, I mean, just glowing reviews of the young electric arms and that he felt like facing you guys, he was going to be ready for anybody he saw when he got back here. When you hear a guy who, you know, has had the career this guy's had, hits the way he does, say that about you guys, what does that mean? What do you take away from, from that? Well, I didn't know that until you just said it. So, I mean, I'm, that's okay. exciting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's awesome. Especially with a guy with his uh, with his career, um, you know, whenever you can get you know like a little nod of respect like that, that means you're headed in the right direction, and that's just what we're just what we're hoping for down here. So uh, I mean, that, that's really cool. That's exciting. Yeah. Did you get a chance to talk to him much when he was there? I did a little bit. Um, you know, I didn't want to be the guy that was like, "Oh, hey, Nick, I got so many questions." You know, I, I wanted him to be able to like do his thing. But I mean, we we talked a little bit. Um, not necessarily just about baseball, but just like uh, about anything, you know, so he's an awesome guy. I mean, I can see why he's, he's been around and everybody loves him so much. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm new to meeting all of you guys as well. And he's, right. I feel like I, I learned so much about all of you guys through what he's able to convey to me, uh, mm -hmm. speaking of which uh, technology, you're a big technology guy, big analytics guy. Is, is that right? So I, I think I got that kind of rap because I went to driveline. Okay. And so, yeah. but so, yeah, no, I, I do like using the, the rap Soto um, and, and track man. I like to know the numbers, but I don't get, I don't dive too much into it. You know, like I like to see like my spin rates and my spin efficiency. Cause that means it's coming out of my hand. Well, mm -hmm. um, but there's definitely people that use it a lot more in terms of like designing pitches and the coaches we have down here know more so about all those metrics. So they help me with that. But, I mean, for me, it's it's really about just getting out there and competing. I don't really try to think about how much I'm 
spinning a ball during the game. Like that's something that I like, I like to look out after and be like, Oh, nice. Like I spun it, you know, this hard, or I threw it this hard, but um, during the game, it's all about competing. Uh, well, and I, I bring that up because I was curious during quarantine, how much you really could do with any of that stuff. If there was that ability, or if you just, like you said, just went out and, and worried about pitching, not so much the numbers. Right. So I, I have a, um, a rap soda unit. So I got the, I had the luxury of being able to kind of see really? all the pitches. Yeah, no. So that was, that was a, an investment I made a couple of years ago. Cause I feel like that's the way the game's going. And it's like, if you don't have one, then, you know, you're kind of behind. And so that's been huge in terms of like getting my pitches where I want them. And so now like when I throw one, I can kind of call out like, Oh, that was 80% spin efficiency at, and you know, I, I'm, I'm getting pretty good at guessing the numbers just based off of feel. So I mean, that's, that's been a huge, huge benefit for me. Do you, is that something you talk to other guys about? I'd be curious, like kind of how that works. Cause I'm sure some guys are, would love to listen and take that in and maybe mm -hmm. use it. And other guys are probably like, mm, I'm good. I'm just going to work. <laughs> Can't do too many numbers. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there's, there's definitely people on both ends of the spectrum. I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys that like Tucker Davidson, he knows a lot about like the metrics and, and why pitches move ways they do. Um, and so like picking his brain and like, I learned something about a change up the other day that I had no, I was reading it wrong the entire time and he told it to me. So it made a lot of sense, but, um, you know, I, I like it, but I, I also think you can, you know, get paralysis by analysis by using it too much. So I, I try to, to limit the amount of information I get. That's really interesting. And this will, this will be my last question, but you, you bring up Tucker Davidson. I, you know, I just talked to Ian Anderson, you, there's such a, great group of young really good arms you're kind of all figuring this out together mm -hmm. um, do you see that as an advantage in a way I mean in comparison to maybe being in a system where you're the one guy that everyone's hoping to see you know make the next level ASAP yeah absolutely I mean as as nice as that second scenario would be um <laughs> I, I I love this one True. because you have friendly competition everywhere you know everyone is competing against each other, but we're also trying to make each other better. Cause like I said earlier, you want to earn your opportunity. You don't just necessarily want it to be given to you. So, I mean, having guys around you, like the days where you feel like you want to slack off and then you see your competition, you know, really working at it that day, you're like, okay, like I can't take a day off. And you know, in the off season, all your teammates are working and it's a fine line between getting past and like staying in, in competition for that next spot. So, I mean, the, the, the competition between all of us is, is I think it's huge for all of our development. All right. Well, Kyle Muller, thank you so much for the enjoyable conversation. We wish you the best of luck the rest of the season. We hope to see you soon.